Hey y'all, this is going to be a little bit of a departure from my typical portable generator videos uh, where I talk about using a portable generator to power your home during power outages. For the last several years, I've been doing some research on solar and here in Texas, it hasn't really made economic sense um, previously to go with solar, at least not from the aspect of going with a company to install solar. And that has to do a lot with kind of that industry and where they are. And, you know, it's been a kind of a land, land grab slash money grab, and it, it's just not a pretty place. And so I've been doing a lot of research recently on DIY solar, and the economics make a ton more sense, especially if you think about it from the aspect of providing your home with a backup power source as well. And so I'm a one of those people that doesn't like to really rely on others. And obviously you can see from my portable generators videos, I've done a lot of preparation to make sure that my home always has power. And so the cool thing I've re realized about DIY, DIY solar is, is that, you know, you can really start small with uh, an off-grid inverter and, uh, and potentially a, a, a battery connected to that off-grid inverter and start moving workload or start moving loads off of your panel onto that in that, that system. And so if you think about, you know, four, five years ago, the price per kilowatt in Texas was, you know, averaging around six to eight cents. We're now in the 13 to 16 uh, cents. And so things are starting to change for sure. And we've been given a warning by our local uh, power company uh, that they are planning on raising rates even more and really due to some of the recent storms that have caused damage to their infrastructure. And so this gave me even more reason to start doing some research. So in this video, I'm just going to kind of get show you how my journey is starting and I'll document it along the way. So far, I've installed a um, inverter as well as a battery and some solar panels. And the nice thing about uh, these inverters is they're all in one. I've seen some uh, over the years I was doing research and they were kind of these complex setups of, you know, an inverter, a battery management system, um, a, a solar controller. So all these other components that used to be separate are now all in one. So let's go ahead and uh, dig into it and I'll walk you through what I have so far. Hey y'all, I wanted to start by talking about the solar panel aspect of my setup. And now this is a temporary setup. I don't have a, a yard um, that I can really set up a big uh, ground array on. And that has to do with just having a big patio and whatnot. But a lot of you probably have space to be able to set up a ground array. My intentions are to eventually add these panels to my detached garage roof and then eventually on the top of my home roof. And so the way that this is set up is there is some uni strut along the top and it goes all the way across. And then on the back of the panel at the top, I'm using a bolt with a uni strut um, piece that sits on the rail and allows me to slide these panels on. I can also just hook them on. And so that bolt is long so that it can allow for the panel to push out. And I'm just using some one foot um, stakes at the bottom to push the panels out. These panels are floating. They're not actually uh, sitting on the ground, although it kind of looks like it because of the grass. But this setup is allowing me to produce somewhere, you know, on a good day around 15 kilowatt hours. Um, and that is either consumed by my critical load panel, and we'll talk about that, or it is used, uh, that power is used to charge the battery that I have uh, connected to the all-in-one inverter. And so this is just an example of how easy you can kind of get started with the panel aspect uh, of solar. And while this isn't really producing enough to um, take over, um, you know, a significant portion of the power in my home, it is actually running my second story AC and um, allowing me to not have that on my main panel. And in, as a end result, I'm not paying for that power from the power company. So next, I'm going to kind of get into uh, what a critical load panel is and how you can break off, um, you know, some of your panel uh, circuits onto the solar system without grid tying uh, your, your solar setup. 
And so this makes it really easy to start doing some solar testing without having to get a permit or without having to make some major changes to your electrical system. So what y'all are looking at right now is the panel that I had existing on my home, which is on the right side. And then on the left side is the new panel that I've added. And a lot of people that are doing these off-grid systems are using a much smaller panel on the left. But my intention long-term is to take all of the circuits that are on this panel and move them over to this panel. And that has to do with a few things. One, I want to be able to put in a transfer switch and a few other things coming from my grid connection. And I also don't really like the, the uh, electrical cabling work that was done in this panel. It's a bit messy for me. We won't go through that right now, but I'll show in, in a video later. But you can see um, the benefit of going with the same panel, or at least with the same brand, is I can easily move these breakers over to this panel, and I don't have to buy a bunch of new breakers. And so the way that this is set up is currently right now, I have... Uh, this large breaker, which is actually the breaker coming from my inverter. And I have some workload sitting here. I have a AC that is my upstairs AC um, in my home. And then I have another AC that is for my gym uh, that exists here in my garage. And so this is eventually going to be a um, interlock protected breaker. And so what that will allow me to do is pull from my grid panel power to this panel while also having ensuring that my inverter connection is off. And so this is useful so that if there is some issue while I'm doing my testing or if I need to take the inverter down, I can easily switch grid power back on to these uh, circuits here and um, while I'm doing a transition. I also have a grid connection going into the inverter that allows the grid to be used when the battery is drained. So we'll kind of go through that next. And again, this is just a beginning kind of um, overview, and we'll go into more detail in future videos of how all this was wired up. Hey, y'all. What you're looking at here is the all-in-one inverter on the top. This is an EG4-6000XP. And I had done a ton of research on different brands, and I kept coming across this company. And so based on the reviews and support and everything and the features and products that they offer, I decided to go with EG4. And so on the bottom, you'll see a wall mount battery. They also have uh, other batteries that are smaller or they are rack mount. I went with the wall mount battery option because I'm going to be um, running out of space in my garage. It's a pretty tight fit in here already. And so um, this will allow me to keep things really close to the wall. And so what this inverter does on the top is it manages the process of taking solar panel power in and either feeding my critical loads or charging the battery that you see on the bottom. And so this battery is about a 14 kilowatt hour battery. And that is enough to pretty much store the power that I get from that small array that I have on my fence right now. And so what this will do is really kind of um, distribute the responsibility of power through not only the battery, but also the grid. It has a connection back to my main panel. And so if there's not enough power produced by the solar panels or not enough power in the battery, then it will seamlessly fall, fall back to the grid panel and get power from there for my critical load panel that goes into this breaker. And so you can see how you can easily get set up with the solar setup without having to go through the permit process of grid tying your panel and really right away start moving some loads off your panel and you know reducing your power consumption from the grid. And so in future videos, I'm going to get into more detail about how this is wired up and I also need to do a little bit more work um, in running another conduit for my PV cable, which you see kind of coming out to the side here. Um, this conduit here is going into my conduit box right there, and that conduit has all the cabling going back to my critical load panel and my grid panel. And so I need to run a different conduit for the PV cable as it's not insulated at the same level as the grid um, and look critical load wires. So it needs to stay in a different conduit. And so again, 
What you'll see in future videos is me going into more detail about how all this is hooked up. But please, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll start answering them like I do on my generator videos. But expect to see a lot more about this project. And also expect to see some additional features to what you're already trying to do if you're using generator power to back up your home and potentially using this solution as a backup uh, power source. Thank you for listening and please like and subscribe to the channel.